Hey, Barry, how you doing? You know what? It has been a hot minute since I've read My Hero Academia. Let's check in with Deku and all of his pals and see what's going on with them, shall we? A few moments later. Ah! 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 Uh, several more moments later. All right, now we're, we're, we're good, I think. Uh, okay. So, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's, um, let's do a recap. Let's do a bit of a roll call here so we're all on the same page. Spoilers, by the way, in case you didn't know that. Uh, we're up to chapter 283 of uh, My Hero Academia right now, so I'm going to be spoiling things that have happened in the last, you know, 10 chapters or so. This whole thing is going on. So, uh, roll call. Let's, let's go through this. Um, okay, Aizawa, just so we're making sure, because a lot of crazy stuff's going on, I had to go back and reread these chapters because I even kind of lost track where everyone was at. Okay, so, Aizawa, he got shot in the leg with one of the deleter rounds, right? So, he, sl he sliced off his leg. So, Aizawa doesn't have a leg anymore. Um, Manuel was kind of using that cool little water quirk to keep his eyes open the entire time, and that was the really bad. Like, Aizawa, like, they kind of all deserve, like, accolades after this this is all over, but I think Aizawa deserves, like, the, the golden platinum diamond hero award after this is all over. So yeah, Manuel's doing the handy little water cork to keep, you know, Aizawa's eyes open so he could keep the erasure up on Shigaraki's, you know, all for one. So that's good, but that was just Horikoshi showing us that's like, okay, even without all for one, he's still just as physically durable and has, like, god levels of stamina, like, he himself is a Nomu anyway, or, like, Giganto Machina just in, like, tiny, like, you know, like, regular, like, six-foot form or whatever, okay? So, um, yeah, that was terrifying in its own right, but Aizawa, you know, he, he gets his uh, eyes, you know, cl almost clawed out by, uh, Shigaraki. I don't think they're, like, gone for good, but he got, like, almost clawed up before Izuku showed up and attacked him. Izuku... His one of his arms is really mangled. I don't know if he's gonna lose it or anything. It's not because of just just one for all, but just the fact that Shigaraki was like biting down on it with that like crazy levels of strength he had. So they haven't really focused on his arm too much. At the end of last chapter, when he was activating the black whip and the float at the same time, um, his one of his arms was like really wrapped up in the black whip and stuff. But it looks like really really mangled, and Izuku's arms were screwed over anyway just from using his quirk for so long. You know, remember like a couple arcs ago. I think it was right after Camino, um, you, you, or actually this was right after the forest camp arc, the doctor was like, yeah, if your arms get any more messed up, like, you know, they might just, you know, lose all mobility. And um, this wasn't Izuku's fault in this one particular instance. He's gotten really good at controlling uh, one for all and, you know, the different outputs and everything. Um, he managed to pull off that 100% uh, Wyoming smash, though, last a few chapters ago. That was really cool. But in this one instance, you know, like, his arms are not, like, they're, they're kind of his weak point and also his, you know, main strong point as well. They're kind of both here. So, Shigaraki was, like, really biting down on one of them, so I don't know the situation with Izuku right now. Um, Gran Torino got a serious critical hit, uh, from Shigaraki. Uh, he's still alive, though. We saw him in the last chapter. He's still alive and, and somewhat conscious, so that's good. Um, but I think it was, like, that one scene, it looked like he got, like, one of his legs ripped off by Shigaraki, so a lot of characters are losing legs or getting their legs or limbs mangled in this, in this battle here. Then you got in Endeavor the entire time that's just trying to like hellfire just just boom go to hell already die damn you know what does it take and so he's kind of he's kind of reached his burnout maximum there Todoroki just showed up Shoto just showed up in the last chapter so he's going to use his powers to kind of cool Endeavor down for a little bit so to kind of get him back in the battle um but Endeavor's there, and Aizawa's probably not going to be much of any help from here on out because, you know, he's missing a leg, and like I said, I don't think his eyes are ripped out or anything, but still, Shigaraki, he's got, like, the death hand that was able to reduce, like, one-third of the city into a sandbox in, like, less than two minutes. So, uh, even coming in contact with that, like, that was, that was scary when Shigaraki went to go, like, just rake his hands right down freaking, and I think it was right at the moment when the erasure was still active, so Shigaraki's rushing toward Aizawa, still got the erasure going, but then the second the hands were, like, raking down, the erasure ended, so, and then Deku showed up and blasted him away, so, it was, like, really close 
where the cork became active again. It was very, very close. But I think, I think Aizawa is going to make it through this. I know there's a lot of people that are saying Aizawa is just going to die in this arc. And that was definitely established. And Izuku and Bakugo are definitely very uh, terrified that that could happen. So they jumped in to try to save their sensei. Um, personally, I'm not feeling Aizawa is going to die in this arc. But it's going to be bad. Like, he he probably will not be able to be a hero after this anymore. Um, and, and Miracle is still alive. Thank, thank the heavens, bunny god, for that. Miracle is still alive, but her arm is also mangled. Um, but, you know, this is like the future, kind of. So, you know, mechanical prostheses, you know, even Mr. Compress has got one of those. So, like, I could see Miracle, and, and her main thing being a bunny, because she's a bunny girl. She's a muscular bunny girl. I don't know if you've noticed. But Miracle... Miracle's main thing is, of course, her legs. She got legs, and her legs, you know, allow her to jump around and do all that stuff, too. Um, so losing one arm for Miracle, I mean, yeah, she can maybe get, like, a prosthetic, and I think she'll be okay, because uh, the main focus of her quirk will still be active with her legs. Um, you know, so she's still okay, but Aizawa losing a leg, and Aizawa was like, you know, he was like the ninja hero, basically. I mean, he was like, obviously, the erasure was his focus, but he's the ninja hero, right? So, you know, he might still get a prosthetic, he might still be able to do his stuff or anything but you know he's gonna be out of commission for a while after this uh if he ever does reappear on the scene it's it's not gonna be for a while okay but he he, he did his he did what he needed to do damn it all right and endeavors there but you know he's he's kind of like he has to like charge up a little bit he's got to cool down there but shoto's helping him out and so right now it's pretty much just um, Shigaraki getting all of his power back from All for One. It's it's all there, and he has his hyper regeneration. Now it it is unstable. It is very unstable, and that was even you know that was even brought up in the last chapter when after the erasure was over, all the damage that Shigaraki had incurred from Deku and Bakugo and Endeavor all together, just hammering him over and over again. Gran Torino, everything he suffered was healing, but then his body almost like tore in half, like it was made out of cray paper, and he's just like ah what. And he had that moment where he glanced over to Deku and he's like, wait a second, what's the date? And I didn't even understand that at first. When reading the chapters, I was just so swept up in it. I just thought like, you know, Shigaraki, he's kind of a few marbles loose rattling around in there right about now. So I'm like, you could have asked him anything. He'd be like, oh, half my body's about to fall apart. Hey, Deku, what's your favorite Pokemon game? You know, like any random question that he could have said, but no. The reason he asked that, I believe, was because, you know, the doctor put him in that tube, in, in the tube, and he's just like, you're going to incur four months of just absolute unabashed suffering and agony, but after these four months are over, uh, your body is going to be, you know, to the level where it can handle all the power of the original all-for-one quirk. Because remember, that's another thing, too. All-for-one that All Might fought against at Kamino, he was just using a duplicate of his own quirk. So he had the original all-for-one quirk that he amassed, you know, like, you know, a hundred years ago or whatever. And then he gathered up all these other quirks that he had with it. And then there was some duplication ability. Either it was a duplication quirk itself, or it was the doctor just messing around with science and making some kind of device or some kind of serum or some kind of ability, uh, probably combining quirks and like the nature of quirks and like genetics together to just make a quirk duplication machine or something or allowing you to take a cork and maybe store it in like physical space like you remove a cork or something and you know it's like a pulsating ball of some weird goo and you like put it in a tube and it's just like there's the all for one cork i can duplicate it whenever i want right some something the doctor did and so he took a duplicate of his own cork that he used to fight against all might and the original is now with shigaraki okay however shigaraki only awoke with 75 percent completion so right now in the arc i believe this is taking place at like the end of of March because it's like at the end of the school year it's supposed to be taking because like the way school years work in Japan it's like they end in March and then there's like a week or two that the students have off and then the next year begins like in April okay that's like how the school year works there so I think this arc is taking place during that break in between their first and second year at UA okay so let's say Shigaraki was put into that tube like around like right after I think it was like during December that they had the fight you know my villain academia with like uh, the, the um, um, uh, freaking Redestro 
and everything. So they had the fight against them there. And so maybe like at the beginning of January, he got put in that tube so his body can be slowly modified and brought up to like the level where it can handle all those quirks at once that all for one gathered. Um, and so he should have been done by like the end of April. So it's like maybe like four months by the end of April, beginning of May, that was like 100% completion. But now it's like the end of March. So it's like one month shy. So that's, that makes sense also four months, 75%. So that, that clicks. So that's why Shigaraki was like, what's the date, Deku? And it's just like, but his hyper regeneration, it's, it's, it's very unstable, but it still ended up healing him even of that injury, right? So... I mean, like, I hesitate to call that an advantage. It's something you can keep in mind, and Deku connects the dots right away, because Deku's a smart cookie, so he's like, wait a second, he's probably suffering the same kind of level that I would be suffering. Like, when All Might was talking about giving him, you know, uh, one for all, and he's like, I'm gonna give you my cork, but I can't give it to you right away. You need to build up your body to the point where you can handle it. And so they had to train for pretty much an entire year at the beginning of the story, just so Deku's body could get cut enough, so he could handle just not even, like, honestly, Deku's body at that point could barely hold as a vessel. Even with 1%, it was still breaking bones and shit, right? So even at that point, Deku could barely handle uh, one for all. But now with Shigaraki, he's not doing, like, the physical... Like, it's not like the doctor and Shigaraki are like, You gotta train, Shigaraki, and I'll lift them weights! No, it's just, I'm gonna put you in a tube for four months, and I'm just gonna artificially modify your body. It's gonna hurt like hell. But after, they, after this is all said and done, you're essentially gonna have, like, a body built like a high-end no plus you're gonna have all for one inside of you and yeah you, know, you could do your own thing at that point right so uh yeah it's not much of an advantage but Deku more than anybody would know about the drawbacks from this and he's aware of it he picks it up right away so we'll see where that goes uh there now, something else with Shigaraki, I just wanted to bring up just from... I, I feel like I've made so many videos about his, like, his character and his development and everything. But even in just the last few chapters, we got more of this. And this is exemplified when uh, we... Oh, yeah! And also, Giganto Machina is, like, giant bone god demon stomping through towns. And a lot of people are gonna die there. So that that's also a thing that's going on. Uh, a lot of heroes are probably dead. Uh, or a lot of heroes are definitely dead. Uh, that's, that's what I, like, what the whole premise of this video. I should really try to kind of stay on top. Topic, but every time I come back and talk about talk about my hero academia, it's just it's insanity, right? But it's really like where do you go from here? Where the hell do you go from here? Like like, let's say, like, two different angles here. Shigaraki wins, and, like, half of the heroes or more are just dead. Let's say even Deku and Bakugo, they manage to escape. Maybe Endeavor is down. You know, Todoroki manages to get away. They manage to all escape. But where do you go from there? It's just like, yeah, Shigaraki's loose in the world. Giganto Machina leveled an entire town. A lot of civilians that are just, you know, dead. Um, you, you know, the League of Villains is stronger than ever. They're still around, uh, you know, and, and so they're just free in the world now. Like, is that where we're going from here? And, and like, you know, a good chunk of all the pro heroes that were all assembled here to fight, uh, they're either, uh, dead or they're knocked out or they're you know, beyond, like, Aizawa. They can't fight anymore in the state they're in. So, yeah, the country is now, like, missing pretty much every pro hero. Crust is dead! We lost Crust! <laughs> I was actually legitimately upset that Crust died. I mean, Crust was, I mean, we didn't go, did see much of him, but he was the shield hero. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. He's got like shield powers and like little hexagonal like shields he could summon. That was really cool. He was like flinging them around like Captain America. Like Crust was a cool guy. He's dead. Um, so yeah. And it's like, we don't know when like the next, like the next time the League of Villains literally do anything we're just afloat in the water with no oars. We're just afloat in a in a boat, you know? Like, we have nothing, we have no hope, basically. Is that the way this is gonna go down? Because I really don't see this going down with, like, Endeavor and Izuku and Bakugo just beating down Shigaraki. Like, well, Shigaraki's dead. That was a really rough battle, but at least we won by the end of the day. But even if Shigaraki falls, like, even if they succeed, which they won't, but even if they succeed... You still got Higanta Machina and the rest of the, um, the the League of Villains stomping around, right? And the rest of Redestro's army and everything like that. So, yeah, like, there's, like, where do you go from here? And this was even brought up a few chapters ago where it's just, like, where, what is happening in Japan right now? Like, what is happening to this country? You know what? I'm actually throwing this idea out there. I've always kind of thrown out the idea... Um, because, you know, All Might did a lot of training in the States, he did a lot of training in the United States, and it's always mentioned in My Hero Academia, like, United, the United States of America is, like, is, like, the, the apex of, like, hero society, you know, like, the homeland of heroes a lot. You know, I was actually throwing out the idea, it's possible, like, 
the League of Villains with Shigaraki, with the power he has, you know, he might eventually end up kind of conquering Japan through not not conquering it like I am the master like of the of the world now, like because he's not like that kind of guy. He's literally like I want to destroy everything. It might get to the point where they just have to evac out of the country, go to the states. You might run into like some like I'm like I'm one of All Might's former you know colleagues or whatever. Like they might have to evacuate to like another country. And in one way that would be cool because we get to see the rest of this world. And I love world building and everything. Like how other countries heroes really handle this you know it might be like a scene like from like soul eater like really like assemble all the death sives from the north like north america south america europe asia africa australia you know it might be a situation like that like let's get the best heroes from you know each like region like the united states best heroes from the best hero from canada who's it gonna be the best hero from england france germany spain brazil portugal uh what's a country i feel like i should mention that doesn't get a lot of recognition um um, the best hero from freaking French Guyana, the, the, the hero from French Guyana, that's, that, you know, like, like, we get a bunch of the, like, most popular heroes from all over the world, because this is all over the place. Uh, best hero from Australia, you know, I'm kangaroo, I'm the kangaroo kid, you know, whatever, let's get the best heroes, like, let's see, let's really establish this, but it might not be a good thing either, because it's, it's literally, like, okay, Japan has fallen, you know, because the, the League of Villains and with the power Shigaraki has, we're just touching the ground at 75% complete control of this ability of his quirk, could just level a city like that, uh, like literally turn it to like a sandbox, like I said. Like, he has that power now, and he's not listening uh, to the will of uh, All for One, so, like, kind of how, how Deku has all of the former vestiges of One for All inside of him, and he kind of takes advice from them and what to do next. Like, he was learning from the Banjo guy about how to use, you know, Black Whip, and there was a little bit of a time skip here between, like, you know, when they were learning about Float to now. So, Deku's probably communed with, like, uh, you know, Nana a little bit. You know, um, Shigaraki kind of has that with his master, but he's like, Master, I, I respect you, and I, I, I thank you for taking me in and teaching me and stuff, but I do not want to be like you. I'm going to take this power you gave me and I'm gonna forge my own path and so he kind of has to resist that urge to go immediately after one for all like brother I'm coming for you wait brother I don't want that screw you get away I'm gonna do my own thing I don't care if you don't understand I'm gonna wreck everything right and this is exemplified when Endeavor was kind of beating down Shigaraki when he still had his quirks locked down from a, from a racer head. And Endeavor's like, you know, with those, it doesn't matter if you have all the power in the world, boy. You know, those uh, th those hollow ideals that you have. Like, like Endeavor's viewing Shigaraki as just like, he's got really nothing going for him. He's just an agent of destruction just for the sake of it being an agent for destruction. And Shigaraki gets right back up and he's like, oh, oh, I'm not just, I don't have hollow ideals. I have ideals out there ass it's just you don't understand them right and so it goes in the whole thing with that like his family and everything and you heroes have, have like fostered this rotten society like i'm what happens when people seep through the cracks of this hero society this is what happens and i don't care if you don't understand i'm gonna wreck the entire world you know it's kind of like look a lot of times when it comes to like uh fiction you can have a villain that's just like i'm a villain that's very hollow uh, I, I don't really have a complicated character arc. I don't have a complicated backstory. I just want to rule the world or destroy the world just for the sake of evil, just for the sake of destroying the world, okay? There are characters like that, okay? And then there's other characters that are like other villains that have really complex backstories, very complex, you know, upbringings and stuff that led them to be where they are right now. Sometimes, by the way, sometimes with the first kind, you know, that very hollow kind of like, I want to destroy the world villain, they might throw some pathos at you. They might throw you some like, oh, uh, my wife died a long time ago. That's why I want to destroy everything. Like, is that the only reason? Uh, yes, it is. I'm like, okay. Sometimes you'll throw pathos at that. But then you have really complex villains. Share who your favorite is below. And by the way, other villains that are like very hollow and just like I'm here just for the destruction's sake you know I'm not saying you can't like enjoy that in a story but I can understand why you could have problems with that right so here's the thing though with Shigaraki you don't have to have a villain like complicated backstory complicated reason for being a villain or no backstory no real reason for being a villain you can mix and match so in the case right now with Shigaraki he has a complex backstory, a big character arc, huge character arc in this story, but overall, he doesn't have, like, really, it's like, I want to rule the world, or I want to change the world, or I want to, you know, break down the hero society and build up something new. No, it's like, complex backstory, character arc, but I still just want to destroy everything. 
you know and i i think I, it's hard to explain from like it's hard to put it into words for me but I, I like the way Horikoshi's going with it. I mean, maybe you don't. Maybe you think that's like, oh, uh, all the stuff with Shigaraki, he should have a more, uh, like, nuanced, layered, you know, goal in mind than just destroy everything. That's kind of ruining the character, maybe. I, I've seen a lot of discussions with that. But I, I just, I kind of want to see where it's going. You know, Shigaraki makes a lot of the game references. He just made one, like, a couple chapters ago. Like, he's, like, rushing at Aizawa. Like, I'm just gonna finally put an end to this stupid game, you know? That's what Shigaraki does. He makes game references. So this is kind of reminding me of like if you're playing like a big open world game like uh, like Grand Theft Auto or something and Shigaraki's playing it and he's just like, I just want to cause literally as much destruction as physically possible, you know, and that's what Sh that's the game Shigaraki's playing right now just to see how much damage and destruction he can he can rot in the world. That's Shigaraki, right? So where do you think this is going to go? <laughs> what, what do you think? Like, Barry, what, what is your way in on this? Um, because I, I think, yeah, at the moment right now, like, Shigaraki might retreat because he knows that he's not, like, fully, you know, realized right now. And he might be meet up with Giganto Makina. Giganto Makina shows up and, like, scoops up Shigaraki. He's like, Master, I missed you! And then they just retreat. And then, like, the entire country is like, oh... This ain't good. This, this ain't good at all. You know, we need to get out of here. And, like, this fight cannot... Like, it was cool last chapter to see Deku with the Black Whip and with Float. And he's got these two quirks. Plus, he's got, you know, one for all working for him and everything. He's He's got this. It's cool. But Deku's gonna start running out of steam here. Like, right? Like, he just... You just can't go up against Shigaraki. He's got too much. Right? And he's unstable, sure. But it's just too much to go up against. Um, Endeavor's gonna cool down. And he's gonna have his second wind and go after it. Gran Torino needs to get out of there. He needs to get evac'd. Uh, you got Bakugo there, too. Sure. He already launched one of his big high-scale attacks. You know, the grenade thing. But, you know, it's just one of these things where it's just like, you know, even if the rest of, like, Class 1A shows up for support, it's like, yeah, you're not going to win. You're not going to beat down Shigaraki. Shigaraki's not going to die on this day, um, you know, and it's just, you, you might have to be like, all right, we're going to have to get out of here. And we're, that means letting them go. But it, it might not be because they want to do it. It might be literally because they can no longer move anymore. Like, Bakugo suffers so much so much damage that he can literally not walk or even move. And so, or it gets knocked out. Same thing with Izuku. Like, this whole thing might end with, like, like, oh, this... I don't know how you would feel about this. How would you feel about this? All right, I'm going to give you the scenario, all right? All right, so Deku, he's got Float. He's got Black Whip. He's lifting everybody up. Shigaraki decays everything. And he's just like, ha ha ha, so you have that one too. Interesting. And then the fight continues a little bit. And it might just end with, like, Deku just... BAM! Just getting clocked in the face or getting hit really hard. And then Deku's like, I'm gonna stand back up. I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna win. Ah! And then he wakes up like a week later. He wakes up in like a hospital or like in an evac site like days if not a week later. Like you know the scene. I think you've seen the scene a lot in movies where like a character will like, I'm gonna win. I'm gonna do this. And then they fall and it's like... It's like a seamless transition, like, as soon as they hit the ground, their eyes open to give you the illusion that they're still where they're at and they're still fighting, but, like, they passed out and they wake up and it's, like, two days later. You know what I mean? Like, you've seen the situation. It might be something like that, because I honestly don't know at this point how Horikoshi could, tr could transition away from this fight without just everybody just being massacred you know like like how do you transition away from that like everybody's knocked out or dead and Higanta Makina scoops up Shigaraki and they just stomp off to just cause an unyielding destruction wave across Japan and then just end of chapter two week break see you back here next time that's how the arc I mean that's that would be a very somber note to end the arc uh, with, like, Deku and Bakugo passed out, and then you just, the Shigaraki stomping away, but it would fit the theme of this, because the theme of this arc, if you're gonna go with anything, is just, like, that pillar of peace that All Might set up, 
cast a really long shadow and we're living in that shadow right now and this is like the turning point like if you haven't figured that out yet from watching this arc or reading this arc like that uh, i'm breaking the news to you here that's what this is like this is not going to be like a hero society like oh there's some heroes walking down the street well hi heroes how you doing ah kids from ua have a good day at school train to be great heroes well it's time for second period english class oh that's interesting yeah no 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 that's that it's like I don't see how we could go back to that after this, you know? Like, well, that was a crazy week. Time to start second year at UA. Well, half of Japan has been completely obliterated, but, you know, well, here's your hero lesson for the day. Like, how do you, how do you move on from this, right? Like, huh. I don't know. I don't know, I feel like that's another running gag. Like, every time I do a My Hero Academia video, I always end it with, like, I don't know. I've I've given you some theories on where I think this is going. I've given you some my thoughts on this. Um, but I want your input here, too. I mean, that's a big part of this, so let me know. Um... But yeah, let me let me know about the uh, if you think there's going to be some uh, major character deaths in this arc, because uh, like everything kind of like there's a few that are like crust and the uh, the X less guy, the laser dude Cyclops, you know Cyclops with a with a eye patch, you know he's dead. So those are already confirmed. Uh, Rio Q isn't looking good. Rio Q isn't looking good at all. Uh, Gran Torino might die. You know, we had that flashback with Gran Torino and Nana when uh, Nana had to leave her child. And, you know, uh, you know, Gran Torino was like, you know, in, like hugging her, trying to like, you know, comfort her when she has to basically leave her child. Um, it, you know, so we had the backstory with him and he's alive so far as we know right now. But, you know, that could change at literally the drop of a hat. You know, he's losing a lot of blood. Um, same thing with Aizawa. So, um, yeah, if, if there's going to be any major character deaths, like after everything is said and done and this arc is over, like they're counting the dead, like who do you think's going to, who do you think's not going to make it out of this alive? Let me know below. I need, I need a drink. I need, I need like water, but I need like, I think I need an actual stiff drink after this. Mm. Yeah, you know, this is what happens, man. I don't review My Hero Academia on a weekly basis. So whenever I get around to talking about it, it's like, you know, 10, 15 chapters build up and I have to compress all that in one video and it literally just comes to like a, <gasps> yeah, <laughs> what do I do? All right. Well, anyway, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like in terms of the action, like, would you say this is like so far the like apex of My Hero Academia, like 283 something chapters, you know, uh, where are we at right now? Like, uh, seven years of serialization. What was that? 2013 or 2014, maybe six years of serialization we're working with right now. Uh, in, in all the years of serialization for My Hero Academia, would you say like this moment is like the biggest, like intense apex of where we're at? Like the, the action is like crescendoing right now, you know? Cause I, I would certainly say that. Yeah. I would certainly uh, put that as a contender, you know, up until now it was like Camino, but like, this is, this is way more than Camino or Hosu or, you know, Endeavor's fight with, uh, with hood or anything like that. This is, this is insanity. All right. Well, um, and just, just to also the morale, just the morale of class one, a, like just, that was the whole point of like the, one of the last chapters was like, they did everything right. And all the heroes are like losing and they're trying to get all the students away. And like, it was majestic. The guy with the, the magic floaty ring, the floaty ring hero, <laughs> he was like, you know, you kids did everything you could do. You did everything right. Do not doubt yourself. Do not think that you did something wrong or you faltered. You did everything by the book, exactly how it was to be done. And this is just still how it would have turned out this way regardless. And you have like Mineta there that's like, did we really do the right thing though? And so they are going to doubt themselves. They are going to second guess themselves. There might be, there might be students after this whole event that are like, screw, I don't even know if I want to be a hero anymore. Could you blame them? I mean, there might be like some heroes that are just going to be reinvigorated. Like, you know, after everything that happened at freaking, you know, the, the city and with the hospital and with Shigaraki, my resolve is even strengthened further. Like Kirishima. Kira, I can see Kirishima doing that. Like Kirishima's like, I'm going to stand tall. I'm going to be a hero, damn it. Yeah. But then you might have other heroes like Ashido. Ashido had a major faltering moment there with when she was faced against Yanto Makina. She might have a moment where she's like, you know what? I, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Because the thing with Horikoshi, the thing that he does really well, not just with like physical damage, like when Horikoshi depicts physical damage in this story, he does it in like a realistic way. Like the perfect way for me to like to like bring this up is um, like... In most shonen, like if this was Black Clover or even One Piece or Bleach or something, character gets stabbed in the hand or stabbed in the arm by a sword or a dagger or something. What do they do? They usually just pull it out and be like, oh, I'll just bandage that up and I'll be like, if it happens in One Piece, like nobody.
nobody cares. Like, you pull out the knife and you patch it up and you're fine, like, a week later. Not in My Hero Academia. Like, remember when Ida got stabbed by Stain? That was, like, a whole thing where he was in the hospital and the doctors were like, yeah, like, some, like, he had some serious nerve and muscle damage. He might not be able to move his hand anymore. He was luckily able to, he could still do it, but, like, Horikoshi goes with that level of realism. Like, Aizawa straight up lost a leg. Like, that's not something that you can just fix. All right, there's gonna be serious, like, physical, like, therapy and rehab for that, right? Ashido, mental, like, damage, and, like, she might have a nervous breakdown after all this. And she might just be like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I can't be a hero. I'm dropping out of the hero course i'll be general studies or, or something i I'm, I'm going to the management or i can't i can't handle this anymore you know like, there might be like some serious things after this arc where horikoshi goes like really real like straight up really real you know so yeah um but i mean I, I i like his writing for that reason he goes into those directions that a lot of other contemporary shonens do not not that every like not that every series has to do that i'm not saying they have to but that's one of the high points of my hero academia like that level of realism but anyway uh, I'm, I'm gonna get going now. I, I don't know if this was comprehensive or comprehensible at all, but um, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, and, and let me know in your comments below how you feel about all this. Let's take a weigh in and, and see where we're at. I might come back here after this whole arc is finished and we'll do a little roundup thing. But yeah, that's yeah. Mm. Have a good one, everyone. Teching, teching, signing out. Hug your uh, adorable rabbit companions.